Welcome to another YouTube video. I'm Brian Weber. In this video, we're going to talk about adding and configuring the DOM, aka the depth of market module on Top Step Trader platform. So you can see here, I don't have a DOM right now. Uh, and if I want to add one, I simply just have to go click the top left plus sign, find the DOM module, click left on the mouse, hold it down and drag the module where I want to place it. So I'm going to place it next on the right hand side of everything else. So I'm going to use ES for an example, click select to load the data. I'm going to readjust my DOM to give the chart and everything else a little bit more room. So you can see we have some replay data going here now, just so I can show you um, this in action. So going around before I jump into the settings. So here we have the DOM uh, module tab that shows you the current product, which is ESM0, which is just the current contract that we're on for June. Um, we have the uh, actual name of the contract, the E-mini S&P 500. We have position, and below there, the zero will actually change based on how many contracts you're entered in, uh, in uh, an active position. You have your P&L in dollar amounts, and you have a quantity of how many contracts you will enter or exit by or sell based on you clicking the DOM here. So we have buy market, which will pretty much get you in uh, at the best offer price. So that will make you go long and sell pretty much you'll hit a bid and you'll get filled uh, in a short position. And the middle button here is, has a, quite a few different types of settings you can have. So exit and market, exit at market and cancel all. So this will flatten your position. This is also known as flattening. So if you're in a current position and you have open orders, it'll get rid of everything. So, so exit at market and cancel all, same thing. Uh, reverse and cancel all. Don't use this, but if you do use this button, just know that if you're currently in a position that's long, you will be uh, short once you click that button. And you also, if you're short, you will go long. And if you have any open orders, you'll cancel all of them. Cancel all just cancels all open orders. Um, cancel offers will cancel everything on the ask side. Cancel bids will cancel everything on the bid side. So um, let's go down to the left side here on this DOM. We have day and good to cancel. I would always keep this at day because um, there's no reason to have good to cancel on an, if you're day trading. So we click the little settings box here. Uh, we just have little tabs here that we can change. Um, in more detail. So this one button that I really want to tell you about is this cancel. And you can actually set a time limit here on when to actually cancel this order. And I believe release does the same thing. It might actually flatten any open positions that you have at a certain time on a certain day. And cancel will actually cancel any open orders that you're not in. So it's really handy, especially the release one would be handy for uh, making sure you don't accidentally fail one of the top set rules where you have to be flat by 1.10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every day. And uh, it's pretty helpful. And then we have the brackets down here. I have some configured, and I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. So if you don't have a bracket and it says off, that means if I enter an order, um, it's going to be naked with no profit target and no stop loss. Click settings here. This is actually where you'll configure the brackets, but I'll make another video on how to do that. So let's jump into the top right here on the DOM. We have a toggle for the hotkeys. So if I click that, turn the keys on, but I'm going to keep it off because I don't use hotkeys. I don't know many traders that actually do. So let's click view settings. And if I click show histogram, that's going to show you where all the volume has been traded thus far. And if you, more or less, it'll show you kind of like a market profile on the DOM. So let me go back to the center price. I can actually click go to last down here. If you click this button, if I'm saying all the way down here, if you click go to last, it'll bring you back to the last price and center the DOM for you. So if I click settings, I'm going to get rid of the histogram. And if I want to show join bid, join ask, um, essentially, if you do join bid, it's pretty much going to put a live order right below the current price, the best bid, and the same with join ask, and probably going to get filled on accident, so I canceled that. So it'll 
I don't use these buttons, but just know that's what they do. Um, stop type. I always keep it at stop. If I'm protecting my position, I always keep this at stop or trailing stop. But if I'm looking to enter a breakout trade, say like when support breaks, a stop limit would probably be good for that. And a trailing stop limit potentially if you're not paying, if you're just setting the trade and coming back to it later. But uh, whenever you're protecting a position, make sure you always have either stop or trailing stop set because in higher volatility markets, it's possible that a stop limit can be skipped and you could still be in a trade when you should be taken out. So let me get rid of this show join bid and ask. Let's go to the settings here. So this show bid slash ask histogram actually shows you the last, the 10 ticks above and below the current price. It'll show you how many orders are on the ladder. Um, if you prefer to show your P&L in ticks as opposed to a dollar amount, click that. Notice how I'm actually just going to enter position by market here. And notice how it says ticks now, right below the or position I have. It'll be one at, because I only entered one contract. If I enter one more, now my average is two at 29.33 quarter. And I'm down four ticks because two ticks times two contracts is four. So let's go back to the settings and let's put that PL back in dollar amount because that's what I prefer. And keep going down. If you show estimated PL, it'll actually show you based on your current position where your dollar amount could be based on where the price could it could go. Um, so you can know how much you can lose and you can know how much you can gain without having to do the math in your head. But I'm gonna get rid of that. And if I want to show chart indicators, I can click that button. Um, and I have to actually add a chart indicator over here. So I'll do that by adding an exponential moving average. I'll just do like a 20. And notice how it didn't show up over here. And that's because if you look over here, there are these things where you can link the charts together. Notice how this is green. It's kind of like think or swim if you've ever used it. So we have this one set at the green tab and I have to go over here to the DOM and do the same. Click that and now you can see the EMA is showing up here at 34. So without looking at the chart, you can actually have the indicators, the values of those indicators plotted uh, on the right hand column here. Last up, you can actually go back to the settings and you can change the, um, the different color scheme that are for specific types of buy and sell orders if you feel like doing that. And the last thing to cover here under the settings is the roll forward and roll backward button. So if you're on the current front month, say June of 2020, and you hit the roll forward button, it'll actually go to the September month because in equity futures, we are three months and every three months, each quarter will roll to a different contract. And then since we're not gonna trade this because we wanna trade the front month, we will roll backwards and it'll bring us back to the June contract where we have an open position. So that wraps up on how to add and configure the DOM. And if you guys enjoyed the video, just give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that logo that's popping up now. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. And uh, looking forward to the next video where we're gonna talk about how to actually place orders on the DOM. All right, guys, take care.